guys, in the last session we did two exercises, exercise number one and number two. Exercise number one was to calculate the friction loss in a system and exercise number two was to calculate the pressure drop given that energy loss. So in this exercise we're going to do something pretty similar but in this case we are going to find out ourselves the friction factor. Okay. In the last one we we didn't need to calculate the friction factor because it was given to us, but in this case, we're going to learn how to do it. So, let's, uh, let me show you here. The system is goes right here. It's a pipeline. The fluid is right here, and we want to bring it to the top. So, I choose my point A to be this one, my point B to be this one. Maybe this is a petrochemical plant or suction uh, pipe or something like that. The length of the pipe or the drilling is about 60 meters the diameter is 1 inch of a 80 or the schedule is 80 what else? well they tell you screwed oil so they give you this data specific gravity is 0.86 at 0 celsius uh, they are kind enough to give you the velocity so with this velocity maybe they know it they have a measurement or something like that is 0.64 meters per second which is relatively low and they give me the density in pascals per second sorry the viscosity and the question will be let's see where is it wait for it yeah they will obviously tell you sorry for not bring it right here but the answer must be the what is the pressure drop this is the question what is the pressure drop in this system okay so let me do some Mathematics, this is the mechanical energy equation. We, since we have point A here and point B, it's the same pipe, I can cancel velocities. So be sure not to do the analysis in here, because if you do it right here, you will say that the velocity is almost zero in A. So you will need to find out the differential, which I think is a little bit complicated. So let's do this right here, okay. We have no work out, and as we can see, there's no pump. So that's kind of curious, maybe they injected some pressure right here and it's, go it's flowing very naturally, which is very normal in the petrochemical world. They have, they inject some chemicals and due to the change in pressure they go right here. So mm, we have no pump, there is of course a change in um, height so I cannot ignore that. Uh, the pressure on B, I don't know it. And the pressure on A, I don't know it, they never told me, but they are asking me only the pressure drop, so that's fine, I don't need it. I could send it to the left, and this will be my pressure drop, okay? Uh, and we need to calculate the energy loss. So, at the end of the, the balancing on the mechanical equation, I got this. You got this right here, and this right here, which is the pressure head, the height head, and the energy loss. Gravity, we know it. And the length is kind of tricky, guys. Probably you are thinking to add 60, but actually CB is 0 and CA is 60. So just be sure to denote that, okay? What else? Because we are making the reference to 0 meters right here, okay? This is subterrain. The density is just 0.86 times 1000, you get this right here, and we need to calculate this right here in order to find our final answer, which is the pressure drop. So, just let me tell you, there is no accessories, there are no fittings and valves and so on. Nope. It's only the pipes, so as you can see, my total friction loss will be due to the pipe wall. Let's calculate this you know the formula and if you don't know it, go back to the previous videos you will find out that the energy loss due to friction in a wall of a pipe is friction factor times the coefficient of the length divided by density and never forget the velocity head which is square and it is to the half recall that the friction factor is a function of Reynolds and relative roughness so we need to find out how much is that. 
So also one detail, you can adjust this diameter directly. We need to go and find out how much is that in our ASME tables. Find out the 80. And it's time eventually to test yourself because no one likes to go to the test without knowing if they actually know it. Because one thing is reading and other thing is actually knowing. So let's do quiz number two. Now let's check out the pipe and pipe lines. And you can see we've been taking these questions. It's nine question. I recommend you score of eight out of nine questions and you should be taking around 10 minutes. So you will get material. This time I'm not going to answer them correctly, but you got all the options, question and answer. And once you set everything, you're going to get your grade. So submit your answers and you will get either is it correct, wrong, whatever. Actually, yeah, that, that will be a pretty normal statistics when you just guess randomly, schedule. And I got that to be 0.96 inches. And I change it to meters and that's the diameter in meters. So recall that we want to calculate the friction factor. Let's calculate the Reynolds number, which is density times velocity times diameter divided by viscosity. So I need everything in international system. So kilogram cubic meter is okay. Meters per second is okay. That's why I change it to meters, the diameter, because I had it in inches, I need it in meters. And the viscosity is this right here because we were given pascals per second, which is the same as kilogram per meter seconds. Okay. Calculating this number, I got this, which is very, very low. And why is it so low? Is probably because the viscosity is uh, relatively high. So that's why we got the Reynolds number so big. Okay. Mm, recall that when we have a Reynolds number lower than 2000, it's laminar flow, guys. So what do we do with laminar flow? We could either go to Moody's diagram, but I will definitely recommend you just calculate this. The friction factor for laminar flow, you can say it's always 64 divided by the Reynolds number. So 64 by the Reynolds number we calculated in the previous slide, which is right here. And I got this friction factor, which is very high. And it makes sense because it's petroleum, it's very viscous, it's very slow, and it's laminar flow. Okay, In laminar flow, we always get high friction factors. Okay. Good, but don't forget that we must calculate the energy loss, not the friction factor per se. So we got this right here, we got this right here, and we got this right here. So let us substitute everything, we got this. We got the length, which is 60 meters, the diameter, which is 0 0.024 meters, and the velocity to the square divided by 2, you get this number right here. 42.4 joules per kilogram. And I just want you to let you compare it with the exercise number 2, the previous video. Uh, in the previous video, we got something very, very small, something about 0 0.03 joules per kilogram, which is literally nothing. And in this case, because we have a very uh, high pressure, let's say, drop, we're going to see that. We have, we have it right here, it's very high, okay? So, let's substitute, we got the delta P. Let me just show you once again the equation, the master equation we're using. We're going to substitute right now, we just need to find drop in pressure, because we already got this value, so let me show you. Oops. Here it goes. Uh, 860 times the pressure cut right here and this right here. So this is very interesting. What does this negative number mean? Is the height, okay? And this number means the friction. So actually, the friction is not that much compared to the head. So the actual pressure drop is given by the height and not that much into the energy loss. Doing this, you get this drop on pressure which is negative and it makes sense, PA. Your PA minus PB will be, where is it? Negative, okay? And that's our final value, guys. Perfect, and we're done with all the exercises I wanted to show you. You need more, don't forget, you can always get more
problems and more theory and more videos on the courses go to the applied fluid dynamics course check part number one and go to solve problems you will get also theoretical pieces you got this slideshow and many others and uh, many documents in the library and yeah we are pretty set up. this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block then you have the sections if you were for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here centrifugal pumps which is a very important topic in this course you have it right here